Hello everyone and welcome to Fuse Room. In this video we are going to talk about a very debated and popular topic, which is the clippers versus limiters. What are clippers and what are limiters? They're both dynamic processors. The limiters you might have used and seen in the past are something in which digital really excels. It's a way of handling dynamics, especially fast transients, in a way that you can't really hear the processor working but you can contain and um, enhance in some ways the dynamics or the overall level. You know that in digital music you have a zero dBFS, which you cannot go past. If you go, if you do go past that, you will have distortion. And that's just digital clipping, nothing analog, nothing fun about it, just plain digital distortion. So limiters came out especially in the digital domain, there are some analog cool limiters, but mostly digital was able to, for example, look ahead in what the waveform looks like and prevent the clipping uh, by employing clever algorithms depending on the brand, depending on the programmer, depending on whoever has done that. Clippers, on the other hand, just went backwards to just plain straight old clipping. So they get their sound and they're used not by the fact that they employ clever algorithms to mask themselves, but rather they employ still very clever algorithms, depending on the plugin, to clip the signal. So they literally just shave off anything that is past your threshold. So that's now you see why this topic is very debated and discussed. Would you use clippers? Would you use limiters? Which is best? Why would you use something that you know just causes digital distortion? Well. In the days of loudness, which I'm pretty sure we're still, you know, waving in there, there's a specific sound coming from the shaving, the brutal shaving of transients. That's why clippers were, let's say, invented in a way. Um, you could, of course, just take a waveform and just crank it past zero and get, you know, some kind of clipping depending on the bit rate, depending on a lot of factors, these resolution generally of the file, but you will reach a specific point in which your computer cannot handle the decimals and all the numbers involved and will just say, I can't describe the waveforms anymore. So that will cause, you know, clipping. Um, this is in theory something you do not want again, but in the electronic music era with EDM, with a lot of uh, house music or some techno styles also employ that, you tend to have the need to be competitive and have very high levels. So that's why clippers were invented to make sure you can contain these clips in ways that are productive to your desired level, the, the final loudness level that you want to achieve. Now in a perfect world where you stay at an RMS of let's say minus 14 dB FS, you will never have the need for technical clipping prevention or handling, but you could still use it for sound. So nobody, you know, prevents you from using a clipper, a clipper set at like minus 18, for example, and your music is at minus 16 dB RMS, and that will cause uh, some amount of clipping, it will change the sound, it will change the sound stage, the transients, the faster ones or the louder ones will get clipped, the whole presentation will be different. That might be something that, you know, you desire in your mix, so that's perfectly fine. So, for these examples, I've set up one song by a dear friend of mine, Berlin producer Richard Trega. I hope, Richard, I pronounce your last name right. I trained a lot before this video to make sure it was right, so I hope this is like the best shot I had. And he's a techno producer that brought songs to me months ago, and this song uh, by him is called Another World, cool name, and uh, especially if you're a video game player. And um, so this song is a very good example to talk about clippers versus limiters, in my opinion. And you will see and hear that there are transients that are past, usually the kick drum is past the overall mass of synthesizers and the other sounds. So you have these peaks that you can already see in, um, in Pro Tools that stand out in, um, in this mix. This is his mix, it's not the master I've worked on. I wanted to get something that has a loudness that we can still pump and achieve, uh, to, to, you know, we can still bring to competitive levels. But 
what we will do is we will try just plain straight compression first to try and get the, you know, the highest loudness we can with just the Pro Tools stock plugin. Then we will try a couple clippers that I've selected. I've downloaded the demos, they're also not expensive, so this is something you might want to, you know, investigate for your budgets. And then we will try two limiter compressors. Actually, I think I've set up like three clippers and two limiters, taking two of the most famous ones that I, famous ones that I still like to use very much. Then we will try a hybrid of both. And um, let's see who will sound best when extremely pushed. We'll go up around plus 16 dBFS. Um, so it will be a lot of gain to take for the plugin and the purpose is exactly to see how things you know, behave. Now, the audio in this session will be not normalized, but leveled by me after uh, I'm done recording this video at um, around minus 14 dB RMS. So you have to think that what you read in terms of loudness for minus 14 dB RMS is going to be the zero dBFS that you will be at. So everything is leveled at that. So there's not gonna be any gain change. And I do this because my uh, current voiceover is gonna land, lay at around, I think, minus 18 dB uh, FS RMS. So if I put the mix at zero or close to that, you will have such a discrepancy between my voiceover and the music that it will just make the, the video bothering to watch and you will have to just turn the volume up and down. I don't want you to do that. So let it be known, minus 14 is our desired super loud loudness factor, okay? See you in the tests. So here we are in Pro Tools. And let's hear the song I told you about. Again, this is Another World by Richard Trega, Berlin techno producer, dear friend of mine. I've been mastering songs for him now in the past months, and uh, this is the mix he's sent me. So we're floating around minus 14 dB FS RMS. He's, he has got proper ways of doing mixing, especially before uh, going to hybrid mastering. So we still have plenty to go in terms of loudness. But I've picked this part right before the breakdown, so you can hear the kind of music we're talking about, okay? Let's listen to the song. Okay, so as you can hear, there's strong kicks, but there's a very nice sound stage in terms of reverb, which is something that usually techno producers really like to achieve, like a front to back strong difference and contrast. So I really like this kind of style. And um, so as I said, we are at minus 14 dB FS RMS, we want to go up. So let's try and see what happens if we just compress some of the peaks and just go up in, in loudness, okay? So what we can set up is just a regular Pro Tools compressor. And ideally one would say, well, if I have the fastest attack, the fastest release, uh, the compressor is gonna stay in for the least amount of time. And then I can go really high on ratio. So we have like a hundred to one ratio. So nothing gets past that and then we lower the threshold until we get some peak reduction and then we lift everything up. Let's hear if and how this works. immediately hear 
what the problem is. The problem is that the kick drum specifically, it's the loudest peak in the track, and this transient, which is the reason why I've picked this kind of genre, if you do it with rock music and other stuff, you have slower transients derived from microphones and real instruments being played. But here, the fast transients from the electronic kick just crush into the compressor and you can hear digital distortion, harmonic distortion happening in on the top of the kick. So the kick is not no longer solid, as solid as it used to be, it now starts to actually generate a different note. And that's a sign of something, can even be in the analog world, that's not dealing correctly with the transients. If you send these to the artist or client, maybe he will call you and say, well, the kick does, doesn't sound as it used to in the mix. It's not as punchy, there's a note that might not even be in the key of the song, and so it's all different. So, why would this happen? Well, the compressor is so fast that it's introducing transients, and the behavior is so rude, in a way, so barbaric, that it, it has an impact on the actual sound. So, one way we could ease these out a little bit is to try and ease the attack and release so that they work around the sound of the kick. Let's try and see if we uh, move from these 10 nanoseconds and 5 milliseconds release to something that preserves a little bit more of the original sound. So as you noticed, there is a relationship between the attack and release times, the behavior of the compressor, the time variant in the compressor, that may ease the, um, the, the artifacts that we were introducing before. So this could be, it's definitely a better way to deal with that um, gain staging problem that we had, that harmonic distortion. And these I wanted to show you to let you understand that this is probably something the programmers have been fine-tuning. Instead of us being, going, being into the compressor and doing it manually, the programmers for the guys, the companies who are doing clippers and limiters, try to make the plugin understand what the optimum attack and release times might be for the overall behavior of the program that you're sending them. That's why they are program-dependent, and that's why usually you don't have that many controls. You can't set the knee or the attack or release. They're not compressors. This is because they have this way of understanding the program material and keep things as, as sharp and on point in terms of, of ceiling control while still not introducing harmonic distortions and other problems. Um, so let's forget about this initial track and let's listen to one of the clippers, for example. This one is a demo version that I've been using uh, for quite a while, six weeks, six days. Maybe it's time to, you know, step forward. And the Casrock K-Clip Pro only has in-gain, out-gain, a softened knob, quality, which is the oversampling, and the possibility of gardening. So the cool thing about this plugin is that you can link the in and outs, and you can notice, you can read actually how much you're getting um, in terms of clipping and the averages of your song. So you can make sure you're clipping just the right amount that you desire in your mixing or mastering process, and then you can gain stage accordingly. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna just pump 16 dBs out, and I'm gonna gain stage the audio for you so that it will not be as loud as I'm gonna have it here in the control room because I am not compensating the output gain. I'm keeping it at zero with a ceiling guard of minus 0.2, which is gonna be the same for all of the other plugins. And we're gonna hear how this is going to hit the final minus 0.2 ceiling that we've set. So ideally this would be 
the zero all of the super loud mixes and masters aim for, which you cannot surpass, but you can say as close you know, as you want. And you, know, you have to know you're gonna introduce a lot of other things that are not in the mix. Usually it doesn't sound better, it sounds louder. But the holy grail is to make things sound louder and as good as they were when they weren't clipped or compressed. So let's push in um, from 0 to 16 dBs and let's hear how this thing behaves. If you can notice anything different, As you can hear, we are reintroducing that harmonic distortion in the kick, which is an indicator that the clipper is having, you know, a hard time. We were pushing 16 dBs, so this doesn't mean the clipper is bad. It means we're really, really going strong. So let's try and play with the, uh, let's try and link both controls, I would say, first. So we have a compensated um, gain. We are hearing at the same gain as before, but with a six plus 16 dBs of gain. And let's try and soften things and see if, if it works better, and let's try and change the soft mode to see if we can solve that problem and maintain loudness. The best one still sounds to me as smooth soft mode with soften zero. Soften is usually also called like um, soft knee. I would say in this plugin it would pretty much be on the same behavior. So you're starting earlier in your clipping compression uh, threshold and you're smoothing things out rather than having a hard knee where you have either no compression behavior or full compression behavior. So this is, I would say, the best that we can get with plus 16 dBs. Let's move to another plug, which is the standard clip. The standard clip by SIR in demo mode, as it likes to say, which is gonna activate and deactivate every 60 seconds, is a similar plug. We can push 16 dBs up there and see and hear how things sound. I'm gonna keep a ceiling on for minus 0.2, same exact thing. Let's try the different clip modes and let's hear how this thing works. The oversampling is also the same amount as before. And here on those two horizontal red brackets, you're gonna see the behavior of the plugin when clipping, okay? Let's try again from zero and let's go up to 16 dB. I'm still hearing that uh, harmonic distortion on the kick. Again, it doesn't mean these clippers are wrong. I'm just trying to picture what would happen if we just take a mass of sound with the strong kick and just push it into the clipper. As easy as that. Because people are brutal. That's how it is in the music, in music industry. So, you know, we could do it with waveforms. Nobody gets hurt. So let's try the fourth one, which is a free plugin uh, called Limiter Number 6, which has 
a lot of functions, including compressor, peak limiter, high frequency limiter, blah, blah, blah. But we're only going to use the clipper, which is depicted by that you know, yellow light, which is the only one on. You're going to see the protection going on as well, because we still have that minus 0.2 threshold set to prevent the red light. Now, this plugin does not allow me to go up to plus 16. I can only go to plus 12. So, to counteract that, I've added a trim plugin that has a plus 4. So, I'm pushing the initial mix, which is around, we said, minus 14, to something around minus 10, and then we're pushing it into the clipper protection to plus um, 16 total. Now I'm gonna play with the threshold. This has a little bit more controls, the knee. Let's try and hear how this sounds. Let's start from, I would say, minus 4, which is gonna be our initial zero, and we're gonna go up. So we didn't do much, I would say, we still hear that same exact problem. I would probably have a very hard time trying to guess which clipper is which. Uh, they all exhibit the same behavior and in a way they are called upon just shaving the transient. So even if there's clever programming there, the ultimate purpose is to have a clipper, not anything that is you know, doing something fancy, just shaving off the waveforms. And here, we can hear that they pretty much shave it the same way, I would say. There might be some sound stage changes, but nothing, nothing major. We still have that problem. So, let's move to limiter land, which is for older people, you know. The limiters were the only thing that you would have, and they were digital, and they were amazing, and you could get loud stuff, and everybody would do it. And now you go back and listen to masters, so-called masters you've done, and you're like, oh my gosh, this is like unbelievably loud, and all of the 3K frequencies are everywhere. So, but that's a problem you have to deal with only if you're old. So that's not a problem. The purple track now is our uh, L3 by Waves. The successor for L2, which was the successor for L1. I think the most famous one is the L2 in, you know, in the Pro Audio area. But the L3, I like it for some stuff. So, I've set a ceiling of minus 0.2, exactly like all of the other ones. And we're gonna go down in threshold until we go to that minus 16. Now, this is only theory. Are we gonna get the same exact loudness as before? Meaning, is this equal to going up? plus 16 with the clipper? I have no idea. That's why I'm sitting in this chair. Let's try.
well, we are never gonna get as loud as the other guys. Some people call these a little bit grainy as a limiter. You will hear that if you're in a high country golf club of professional audio people, by the way, which you should run away from. Uh, but if you're still stuck there making small talk, they will probably say it's grainy. It's true, it is grainy. It has a grainy factor which I kind of like. I know the L3 is like that, I don't dislike that behavior. And it's typical of some productions, again, it calls back to probably what I would call late 90s, 2000, but... So now we're gonna move on to the other one, which is the um, ML1 by Mac DSP, and we're gonna do the exact same difference. We're gonna go to minus 16 from zero, and let's hear how it sounds. As you can see, this plugin has fewer controls, and when I go back to clean mode, which is the original default, to minus 16, I can hear that pumping factor back, that harmonic distortion. But when I go to loud, I have to say this is pretty good. But as you notice, you can play with those values and they really, really fine-tune the relationship between the front and the back, the, that kick hit. So why don't we compare the waves against the um, Mac DSP? That could be interesting. We're gonna go minus 16, minus 02, and same here with, well, here we can change the knee and release, so let's keep it at that and let's see. We don't really know what the knee is in the waves. So I'm gonna alternate the purple one or bright pink, which is the waves, against the green one, of course, which is the Mac DSP. So let's start with the waves and go back and forth. Very interesting. You notice first off in the break, there's very little difference between the two. There is, there still is, but it's minor and the song still breathes because there's the ceiling, the threshold is not getting touched. But in the main groove, the behaviors are completely different. So the ML4000 uh, in his ML1 version is, I would say, darker in a way, but a little bit louder and has a deeper bottom, while the waves focuses more on that high frequency stuff. So they're different, they're not inherently better or worse one another, I would say, but they're different. 
of course. So now we're gonna go to the final part, which is gonna be like an added bonus to everything, in which we're gonna try and make both coexist. We're gonna take the track, clip it first, or actually probably I'm gonna limit it first, and then we're gonna put a clipper before that to try and get the best of both worlds. We're not gonna use them exactly the same way, the clippers will behave a little bit differently, but I think that is like the final um, element that I want to show you to really understand also that it's not a clipper versus limiters. It's like clippers and limiters and you know how to use them and you've become amazingly good with this video that you can use both and you're no longer scared. All right, see you in the next phase. Hello everyone and welcome back for the very final part of Clippers vs Limiters. This is the interesting part in which good and evil learn to coexist and the movie ends with amazing music. We're gonna make limiters and clippers work together. We're gonna start with the waves, L3, we're gonna set it to this minus 16.0 threshold, which is gonna pump everything up 16 dBs or, or so. But then we're gonna try, this we already heard in the previous video, but then we're gonna try and use the standard clip to prepare sort of the uh, track for being hit by the limiter, by the waves. So the standard clip is gonna be first, before the limiter, but we're gonna work on it after the limiter, okay? So let's set up the limiter first, which is gonna be fairly easy, we already know we like this, so let's try and go to up to minus 16 and hear how it sounds. Okay, so this we already knew, we like, Let's say this, uh, we don't need to compare with the original, this is the uh, level at which we were. It's a minus 16 threshold, I'm reading around minus 4, minus 6 dB, FS, RMS. It's already very loud, but for the sake of this example, let's try and see if we can get these to work uh, and prepare the song for being worked by the limiter. So. What I'm gonna use here is, I'm gonna use no ceiling, I don't need this to pump anything, I don't need this clipper to be doing any lifting. I actually wanna go back to the uh, clipping, the clip uh, meter here, the clip fader, and I wanna move it down so that we get just a tiny little bit of clipping. And this is gonna be probably only for the kick hits, which are the ones that stand out of the general wall of sound that the, the song has. Then we're going to use the gain to give the track back a little bit of gain. And this is gonna go into the limiter itself. So we're gonna have less fast transients, which are gonna get hit by the uh, standard clip clipper, and then we're gonna push everything into the uh, waves limiter that you can see on the right. Let's try and see. Uh, again, the meter here with the two horizontal red bars is the left and right channels. I've set it up, actually let's set it up for plus minus three, so we can really see very small movements from one, zero to three dBs, which is gonna be plenty, I don't wanna, I don't wanna go over that. I actually gonna try and see if around 1 dB is already a lot, so 1 decibel, and uh, around that, when we see the green lights blinking there, the green you know meter going down, we know that the clipping is happening, and then we're gonna give a little bit of the 1 dB back, with the waves active, we're just gonna go into that.
All right, let's try SoftClip Pro or SoftClip Classic and see what which I like the best. I can't say that I always like to proceed this way and I would still try to avoid a lot of clipping and limiting. But then again, I have to say, it's a way to get louder better than just getting the threshold down on the L3. We are just shaving those kicks and just going a little bit up in volume and we actually gave it like 2.2, so we cheated, we're like shaving one and giving two. So, but you see that by playing with these two factors, you can really alter and maybe even a little bit alleviate the problems or the signature that the L3 would give if it had just taken that, you know, uh, track as it was. Let's try the same exact settings, copy-paste on the ML1. Let's hear it by itself and then let's hear uh, the two one against the other because you know we like to put people one against the other let's try and see Strong center, very different way of limiting, so I think this pretty much works. So let's copy paste the settings or just let's drag the plugin here and let's compare the clipped limited versions one against the other again. I think the Mac DSP gets out being louder than the um, Waves L3, but I don't know. I, I saw the meters, I think it's a little bit louder, but the presentation is also very different. So let's start with the waves and then let's go to Mac DSP and back and forth. Meter-wise, I have to say, uh, probably they're kind of on par, they're not uh, terribly different in the way they move, but the perception of loudness and the presentation of the whole mix are completely different. And I'm not here to tell you which is best, I'm only here to tell you how both things can interact, the clippers and limiters, and how this can affect your sound, so once you're wary about that, then you can, you know, take your own decisions. So I hope this was useful for you. And then again, Alberto Rizzo Schettino here, signing off. Fuse Room. Ciao.